Welcome to Switch Comics. My name is Marco, and it's Wednesday, yet again, new comic book day, and it's a big week for indie books. Uh, it's funny because working for a comic shop, you know, we get we have to work with three distributors now. So Penguin is our Penguin Random House is uh, Marvel, uh, Lunar is DC, and then Diamond is all the independent stuff. And those all obviously come in on different days. So we got our DC in, and I had no DC books for the week. And then we got our Marvel in, and then I had two Marvel books for the week. Well, yeah, two Marvel and a couple of Star Wars. And I was like, oh, I guess it's going to be a small week. But then the indies came, and that's where it really cranked up and saved us. I didn't count how many books I had, but it is a healthy stack of books for what otherwise was about to be a very short week. And it is still, like I said, not just for me, it is a very short week for Marvel. Uh, especially, I feel like DC was also pretty low, but Marvel especially felt very light this week, which, which happens, you know. Not every week, you know, a bajillion titles be coming out. Sometimes the stars align and nothing's coming out that week. But, still got some good stuff to talk about. Regardless, we're going to start off with Marvel since there's next to nothing there for it. We got Moon Knight, number four, right? And uh, this one was a fun book. Um, nothing major happens in it, but again, this story has been great. The art has been great. And um, a bit of a more uh, a slower issue to take a little bit more of the emotional state of the man behind the mask, Mark Spector. Um, cool issue. Again, you know, nothing crazy. No, no amazing, super awesome fights or nothing. But, um, you know, no first appearances of anybody crazy. Well, there might have been. No, I don't think, I don't think there are any, more, any first appearances. But, you know, not a huge key or anything, but a good book to read on a great series that's been doing awesome things so far. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moon Knight is, well, well, I'm throwing it because I'm so excited, but Moon Knight has been killing it. Um, moving on to Darkhold Blade. So this is the thir third book on the Darkhold... Um, miniseries or whatever you want to call it. They're all, all a bunch of one-shots. So, uh, again, with these uh, Dark Old books, they're kind of doing um, kind of what-if stories. And then this what-if story uh, for Blade is basically uh, the world has been turned into vampires. Or, or more so, you're either a vampire or a human. You're no longer, if you were a mutant or an inhuman or uh, anything else, that's all been nullified and you're either a vampire or you're a human. And um, strangely enough, there's actually not a lot of Blade. Well, I guess you could kind of say the same thing about that uh, Iron Man book as well, because that more so focused on um, Pepper Potts. So this one focused on a different character. I don't want to, it's not a huge spoiler, but uh, I mean, you learn immediately in the book, but it was, it was, I was like, oh, okay, this is, you know, who we're going through on this one. But I will say, you know, uh, Blade seems like a secondary character almost in this story, but it is about the building of this new, you know, evil Blade. Um, and it was pretty good. I don't think it was as good as the Iron Man one, but honestly, the Iron Man Darkhold book was one of my favorite comics I think I've ever read. It, it is definitely up there. Um, and, and you, you know, just a one-shot so, I mean, it was it was pretty amazing what it was able to do. Now, granted, it was going back on a story that people are fairly familiar with in twisting some things around. Um, I don't think this one was as terrifying. Um, it didn't have that just unsettling, creepy factor to it. It was just uh, kind of more of a vampire story. So, it was a fun book. I enjoyed it. And then obviously these things, all these one-shots are different writers, different artists, and everything like that. And, uh, you know, I will say the art was, was fine on the Iron Man issue. It, you know, it wasn't like anything that blew my mind. It was really the writing that uh, took me back on this one. And the, the art, again, is fine on this, and the writing is fine. So, you know, it's not as good as what I consider to be just an absolutely incredible book, but not every book's going to be. So I enjoyed it. And that is it for my Marvel, other than the Halloween books that came, or Halloween Fest, or what do they call it? Extravaganza, comic book extra, extravaganza. So we got the Hawkeye number one reprint here. Um, yeah, I have, a, you know, I have two copies of this book, yeah. The, the regular thing, so, you know, whatever, it's free. I'm going to pick up, you know, another copy of this thing. 
Um, yeah, if you don't have it, it's a great way to, you know, go ahead and grab this book. Um, I mean, obviously, Kate Bishop's uh, going to be super hot coming up here in the new Hawkeye series. And I don't, you know, I don't think this book will be necessarily worth anything, especially since they're free. And, you know, I mean, maybe if it was free and it came out five years ago or ten years, well, ten years, probably too long ago, five year, years ago or something. I don't even know when this first book came out, actually. But I'm going to assume, let's just say, let's say even if it came out two years ago. <laughs> I don't know when the first issue came out. But anyway, you know, and no one was specking on Hawkeye or specifically Kate Bishop. Um... You know, and then nobody picked up this book, and there or the ones that did, you know, end up losing and throwing away, getting damaged, whatever. Nobody cared about it. Then maybe it'd be worth some money. But now everyone's like, "Ooh, this is a hot book, hot book," you know. So obviously, people are going to be grabbing this. People are going to be trying to flip it on day one. I'm sure. Actually, you know, we got these in, you know, earlier because I mean we have to get our shipments in earlier. So I'm sure I haven't checked on eBay, but I'm sure people are trying to flip this book. So. That's just how it is. You know, just pick it up and read it. That, that's what this book is good for. You know, same thing like with Miles Morales, number one. Uh, the other Halloween fest or whatever it's called. Just remember, Halloween comic book extravaganza. This is a book I do not have. So, again, nice to have a little uh, different reprinting of this book. Again, nothing I think that'll be worth a ton of money, but it's cool to have, you know. And then moving on to Star Wars, but keeping with the Halloween extravaganza, we got Star Wars High Republic number one. This one, I feel like, made the least sense to me. I mean, I picked it up anyway. This book's not that old, like, which, I mean, the other books are, are pretty modern as well, but this book is very, very recent. Uh, <laughs> so, I don't know. I felt like they could have done a better pick, like they could have done, I don't know, Heir to the Empire, or, I, I don't know. I feel like there's better Star Wars picks. You know, it could have been... Well, I think they've already done one for Dr. Aphra. Uh, but, you know, something along those lines. It could have been a reprint of Clone Wars 1 or something. You know, I feel like there's better books that could have came out. But regardless, I picked it up anyway. Maybe you missed out on it. Maybe you didn't get this cover. It's a way for you to get that cover if you didn't get it before. Uh, or, you know, maybe I'm just speaking from a place of privilege because I own the, you know, the, the regular book. Um, but I don't, I don't know, you know. And then moving on to two Star Wars books that I did not read because, again, I'm not caught up with War of the, uh, War of the Bounty Hunters. Uh, hopefully now that it is... I know the main line is over. Hopefully the tie-ins will be ending pretty soon, and that will give me the inspiration to actually complete the series because I hate when it's each week. It's like, oh, no, like there's three or four more new books added to this growing list of books that I need to read and complete on the series, and it just overwhelms me and makes me not even want to start. But when it's over, it's like, mm, okay, I can take my time with it. Even though I'll probably just speed through it. <laughs> no, one setting or something. But anyway, so we have IG-88. Again, War of the Bounty Hunters tie-in. Uh, super cool, awesome cover. Um, I mean, you know, a droid with a bunch of fire in the background. How can you go wrong? Uh, like this is Born to Kill on there. Uh, pretty, pretty awesome cover. Um, I like IG-88. He's pretty cool. I read a book. I forgot what it was called. I think it was a book, one of those books that had like, you know, little mini stories in it, and it was about, um, there was four IG-88s, and um, they were like doing different things, trying to take over like the universe, basically, and the last thing that <laughs> the last one did was it took over the Death, it uploaded its its consciousness to the Death Star, and then obviously we know what happened to the Death Star, so I liked that story, it was a fun one. I think two or, th two or three of them died by Boba Fett. Um... I can't remember exactly. It's been a very long time since I've read that book. But uh, it was it was a good story. And anyway, I like IG-88. He's pretty cool. I mean, he's just a murder robot. <laughs> What's not to like about him? And then we have... Uh, this is Darth Vader, right? Yeah, Darth Vader, number 17. Uh, picked up another one of these 50th anniversary uh, covers. However, I will say the cover A on this thing was incredible. It was um, a side profile of Darth Vader's helmet with his lightsaber kind of... Like, his helmet was most of the cover, and then his lightsaber was kind of on the cover. And then, you know, he had all these cool uh, red reflections in his uh, mask and everything. Beautiful, beautiful book. I almost picked that one up as well, and I held off on it. Don't know if I regret it yet, because, <laughs> man, it is, a, it is a gorgeous cover. But anyway, I've been picking up these 50th anniversary covers, and uh, might as well continue. It was my mindset. Even though, I mean... I don't know, like, Maul's cool. I'm not a big Savage, uh, oppressed guy. One, I think his name's really lame. One, I don't think he really did anything. He killed a couple, like, 
or maybe just one. I don't, he, he killed one or maybe a couple no-name, I mean, they had names, but, you know, just, like, a relevant Jedi. And then he was beat up by Darth Sidious, so, like, like I mean, which, I you know, it's Darth Sidious, you know, but, like, he, I don't think he did anything of uh, to warrant any, any coolness. I mean, even Maul's kind of a kind of a chump, if, if, you, if you ask me, you know? <laughs> but at least Maul, you know, he, he's the OG. He, he was pretty cool. He had his double lightsaber and everything. I feel like Savage Opress was, um, I don't know, just Maul, but not as cool, you know? <laughs> Not as red. <laughs> so another Star Wars book I didn't get around to because uh, I actually thought this was number two and I am, I, I haven't started this series, but <laughs> High Republic Monster of Temple Peak, number three, uh, into my, my box of books I need to read. Um, I messed up, I screwed up and didn't read that first one and then I've been behind and I was like, oh, I'll get to it. And I, uh, you know, I don't get to it. I'll get to it eventually though, I guess. But now we start our independent books. So we're going to start here with crossover, what is this, number nine, crossover number nine. We are coming along in the story, and man, I, lo I love how meta this thing can be. Um, it it's, a, it's a fun book, there's a couple of appearances of, uh, you know, because it's always fun, especially when you're in the facilities and everything, to be looking around and trying to spot the characters from other series and stuff. So there's a little bit of that in here uh, towards the beginning, um, and they're definitely setting some things up. Um, they're introduced to two detectives that I do assume that's, that's also part of the problem is a lot of the characters are from like these other indie titles that I have not read, and so there's two detectives that I'm more than positive are from from something else, and I don't know what it is. And what they're building to towards right now is uh, ever since um, was that issue seven, the Z uh, Zadarsky issue. Um, there's been this character. We don't know if it's a comic person or a real person, or I don't, I don't know a force of nature itself. It, it's something coming around and killing off comic book creators. And so they're kind of spinning around some ideas, some theories, trying to figure it out. There is another. Um, prominent comic book creator um, uh, introduced in this issue. I don't want to say too much about him, but uh, it, it may, I mean, you should, if you know about indie comics, I mean, not even indie comics, you know, just, I mean, if you know about comic book writers, you should know who it is, and uh, pretty cool. There's one little sad thing that happened, I guess. There is, uh, I, I think there's one thing that won't be popping up in this series anymore, at least for a while. And it's like, oh, okay, well, that was a short little run, but, you know, fun while it lasted, I guess. But uh, other than that, I mean, Crossover has been killing it. Uh, you know, Donny Cates is the man. And <laughs> it's just been a super fun book to read. Uh, moving on to a very strange book. We're on uh, to Nine Stones, number three. And personally, I really like this book. It is bizarre. It is weird. Um, I'm not in love with the art. The art is there. It's fine. Uh, it's a. It's just a grotesque book. It's strange. It deals with these weird emotions of these characters. Um, there's anger. There's love. There's lust. But in kind of weird, disgusting ways. <laughs> so. This book, I will be uh, upfront with, is not for everyone. In fact, probably not for most people. But it is one that has me strangely intrigued just on how different it is and how... Um, I mean, it's it's just strange. It's just strange. It's I think it's well done enough. Because sometimes books are just strange and it's just so far out there and it's it's just weird and you can't keep up with it. But this, I mean, the story is simple enough other than the fact that there's this, still this weird monster thing attached to this guy that we have no explanation of and hasn't really done anything in the series yet. But it's definitely there. <laughs> uh, and it, like I said, it's just a weird book. And uh, if you give it a shot and you don't like it, and you, you know, you're telling me, you're like, Marco, this is a weird book and you are a weird man. I would, I would understand and I would not be offended if you did not like this book. However, I'll just, you know, I'll just say that I do enjoy it. And that's the best recommendation I can get for it, I guess. 
And then moving on to Echo Lands. This is number three, right? Yeah, Echo Lands number three. And this is that uh, that book, you know, that opens up and reads uh, in the landscape portrait, I guess you would call this. Uh, and man, I'm not crazy about the story on this thing. I'll be upfront with that. The story's kind of whatever, kind of convoluted. They introduce a lot of characters that are uh, not even just characters, but even like concepts. There's just so much stuff going on, and it's just kind of crazy, super fantastical. Um, you're entered into this world where um, nothing, you know, there's no semblance of, of the real world in it. Everything is so strange, and this, you know, there's clearly a lot of uh, story untold in this. That being said, the art is so beautiful in this book, and the they're so creative. Like, they, they clearly think of the entire page. And when I say the entire page, I don't just mean, you know, just a single page from the book. This entire, every page is like a double splash. Even if it's not, they have just such a unique way of creating the panels where, the, so it's, it's basically a splash page, but you're still reading all of this first as if you would read a normal uh, comic. And then you would read all of this next. And... It's just all the panels are woven together into like a big canvas of art. And the whole thing is is so um, liquid and, and connected. And the, the art is just is fantastic. It's, uh, it's really incredible how they can break these panels apart. Uh, there, there'll even be panels where, for example, uh, let's see if I can find it because it's pretty early in the book where as you can see um, I don't know how well you can tell there but this beast and the the character in the red hood here are going through the different panels but the water all matches up if you look at the the water closely from panel to panel it could almost you know you could think of it as just one big image but at the same time, as you switch, you see the characters are moving in different positions. And so a clear, clearly a story is being told, but it's also being created as one large art piece at the same time. And, you know, these are clearly not um, normal ways to break up panels with the, with the way it waves and everything. And, man, this book, as, as difficult it is to keep up with the story and really know what's going on and know this world that they're in... I kind of don't care because I love just looking at the art that much. I think it's it's super well done. It's super creative as far as, um, you know, a, a comic book. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen one quite like this as far as uh, how they treat the whole thing as an art piece. So if you're into that <laughs> or if you're super into fantasy, I'm not a big fantasy guy either. So I feel like if you're uh, more into fantasy, you might be you might be more interested in the story it's not really my thing but again the art is just that good the art is that good that it has me interested um then we're gonna move on to oops i grabbed the wrong book here we don't kill spiders number two uh the first book i feel like came out a long time ago i meant to look it up uh but i forgot to because that's just how i am this is a really cool book. I forgot actually how much I like this. Uh, <laughs> it's been so long since I read it in my mind. I was just like, oh yeah, that first issue was fine. But uh, I was like, no, this thing, this thing's pretty cool. I like this quite a bit. It deals with a witch and and demons, and they're in you know in this town trying to figure out why this place is cursed and everything, um, and different gods and deities and devils and uh, again, pretty I don't know, fantastical, but in a different way, not in your typical fantasy way, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a super cool book. I really like it. Um, I don't really want to spoil it, I guess. I don't know if these guys are supposed to be Vikings or... I don't, I don't know. I don't know what time period this is exactly, but it's, uh, it's, it's something super cool, and I, really, I don't know if I would really want to call it... It's not really like a horror. It's more, I mean, just a... I don't know, dark fantasy, maybe I'd call it, but it's a cool one. Also, I think it's really interesting that it's just a red background, or back cover with uh, with the barcode there. It's like there's nothing nothing at all going on here. Actually, it's even, oh, it's got a little bit of, okay, I lied. <laughs> this is a black caravan and stuff, but it's super, super light. I didn't even notice it at first. 
Um, but yeah, anyway, moving on. Just got a few more comics to talk about. So we have Good Luck number five. This is uh, a series that I was struggling with. I considered dropping, but I was like, man, it's you know, it's just a five part. I might as well finish it out. So I did, and I gotta say, not a huge fan. <laughs> I think the art on this is so messy, so vibrant and, and violent, not as far as it listening, you know, super bloody or whatever, nothing like that. It's, it's violent on your eyes. It's so aggressively in your face constantly that it, um, where Echo Lands is this purposely blurred together, like, like I said, mural of all, all and the whole story going on. Good luck feels like it all blurs together just because you're having a sensory overload. And uh, I think this story is cheesy. I think this story is convoluted. And it's weird. I feel, it's, I feel like that's not two things you can really say together. Uh, but that's just my impression of this, how it all went. Um, I, I try not to be like this, but... I do not recommend this this book. If you enjoyed it, if you're reading it and you know you like it, good on you. You know I'm not gonna I'm not here to tell you not to, but um, you know I try to be honest on the channel. Did not enjoy the series. So if you were thinking about maybe picking it up or picking up the trade or this or that or whatever, not my jam, not my art style. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all I got. I don't know. I don't feel like. The villain was was villain was very well done. I feel like there's certain threads of the story that were never picked back up again. I don't know. I maybe I wasn't sometimes because I do feel like when you're disinterested in a book, you pay less attention, so you could miss things. Um, so I mean, there's always that. To, I, I I mean, I do try to be fair in everything that I do, you know. Um, so maybe maybe some things were wrapped up and I just didn't even notice, but. I mean, if things are happening and it's just so un uninteresting that I can't even care, then, I mean, I can't in goodwill, you know, promote this book or recommend this book. Uh, Dark Blood, number, what are we on? Uh, number four here. Again, another series I've contemplated dropping, Better Than Good Luck. And honestly, it it has the bones of a good story in it. My My problem with this book, and there's just two more issues on this one, so I'll probably finish it as well. My problem with Dark Blood is that it jumps around in time entirely too much. Literally two panels onto the first page, it goes back 10 years. It's like, you know, it's like uh, current time or whatever. And then within two panels, it is like 10 years before. And it's like, oh my God. And it, it, throughout the book, it, it's constantly changing. Throughout the series, it's been constantly changing. And it's, it's one thing if you have a single issue that kind of does that. Um, but when it's the entire series and it's in such short segments, I don't feel like there, there's a type of writing. There's a type of writing that it, you know, it wants you to jump around so it can show you different things. It can hold off on different things. So the reveal is bigger. And I get that. I actually like stories that do jump around. I, I, I genuinely do. But when it's done well, I guess is the best way I can do it. And this feels like genuinely it's a good story. And they're just like, mm, let's just keep going back and forth to keep them on their toes or something. I don't know. So this is a book that I can't strongly recommend. It is good. I'm, I'm liking it, but I'm at the same time frustrated with it. And maybe, maybe the message is lost on me. Maybe, um, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm miss. I feel like the thing is though. I feel like a, a good way to do a, a time jump or like you know flashbacks and different things like that. You know, you'll have like your your current thing going on, going on, going on, and then you'll have your flashback, and it's like ah, oh, this is this is why it's affected this character in this way. Blah 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 blah. blah. I don't feel like any of the flashbacks and the jumps around here and there and everywhere. I don't feel like it's changing the next part, or changing what I've already read. I, I just feel uh, just like I've been picked up by my shirt and rattled around. That's what I feel like. And it's like, I'm, I'm trying to pay attention. Can, can you stop shaking me so much, you know? Um, 
So, I don't know. If you're reading this one and it makes more sense to you, maybe maybe I'm just stupid. That's always a possibility. But uh, I just feel like there's entirely too many time jumps. And then the only other book I have for you today is House of Slaughter. Number one, I picked up the foil cover. I'm a sucker for foils. I don't know if this book will ever be worth anything. Definitely not be worth anything like Something's Killing the Children. Number one will be... Um, but I don't know, you know, it, it might end up being a $15 book or something, you know, even $20, $30 book at some point. I don't know. I, this is a, kind of a spec buy, you know, but it's it's also a cool foil. So, I don't know. You know, even if it's a $10 book later and I end up flipping it for 10 bucks, that's something, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of doubt it because, you know, when there's a book that everyone knows is going to be a big book, then it's not a big book. It's like with Berserker. You know, there was so much hype behind Berserker, and there was just so many uh, books printed. I, I want to know if there's a, a print number on, on that issue one, because it's got to be astronomical, because so many, there, there was so much hype behind it. I think it's still, at our shop, the most uh, subscribed to book. Um, it, you know, there's a lot of people that pick up all the variants, and there's always two covers, and then uh, the same two covers, but foil. And they just make they just print so many. So even if Berserker gets a TV show and a movie and and this and that and whatever, and it's all super successful and popular, I just can't see Berserker number one, you know, ever really being worth anything, because just you know, so many people uh, made so many, or they, they made so many copies of it. There's so many of it ordered. That being said, not as many people, I think, ordered House of Slaughter. I mean, I think definitely a big book. I don't think it's Berserker level. Um, but yeah, I mean, everybody, you know, everybody's like, oh yeah, you know, something's killing the children is, is huge. Definitely want to get the, the new number one on that, you know. It, the only thing that probably be worth some money, you know, there's a, a one per store, I think. Um, and maybe some of your ratios, I don't, probably not even those, honestly. Like your one per stores are always good, um, values because obviously there's not that many of them. I love one per stores. I, I'm not going to pick it up for this because I'm not reading... Uh, something's killing the children, you know. Uh, I mean, I've heard it's good. I just I never got on it. I might, I might start on it one day. Who knows? But I don't know. But that is my comics for the week. Pretty decent stack here. Uh, I did want to say for those of you who stuck around and watched the full video uh, on my last video, you know, where I talked about my giveaway winners and all that. I uh, read the comments because I asked, you know, did would people prefer? one big prize or three, you know, smaller, but still, you know, obviously good prizes. Um, and people seem to like the format of, of three winners. Uh, I, I don't think I had a single person ask for one big prize. Now, granted, I, I guess it would be different if I had examples, but I don't really know what I'm going to do yet. So, I mean, I guess if I was like, I'm giving away an Amazing Fantasy 15, you know, people would be like, oh, okay, okay, actually, yeah, let's, let's do one prize, which, I, you know, obviously I can't do. But, uh, you know, if I had an example of what I would give away, uh, I, don't, I don't know. But that's, I kind of want to know if people wanted the one big prize or three smaller prizes so I can start to look out for, um, for good prizes. Because, like I said, uh, I, you know, I, I hope that everyone that uh, won, in, you know, really enjoys the comics that they got. That being said, moving on to 1,000 subscribers, I got to do bigger and better, you know? The prizes have to be bigger and better and, and stronger and, and bolder, you know? Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we definitely have some time before we get to 1,000, so I appreciate the feedback from everyone is where, is where I'm getting at. I'm rambling now, but I appreciate the feedback so much. Uh, as always, you know, leave some more comments. Um, I will give you a hint. I will give you a, well, not a hint, but a tip, I guess. When I do my 1,000 subscriber giveaway, everyone that's commented for you know for the 500 subscriber giveaway I'm gonna keep all those because I want to reward the people that have been with me you know what I mean so the longer you've been with me and all the comments you've done those will still be there and still be considered for the giveaway for a thousand sorry about that my camera bugged out for a second but what I was getting at um, everyone who's commented you know I appreciate all that so much and I want to definitely keep rewarding the people that have been with me. So all the 1,400 plus comments that I've had before, 
that were part of the 500 subscriber giveaway will continue on to the 1,000 subscriber giveaway. Um, so when I finally do that, you know, when I'm at 1,000, I mean, you know, I'm going to have even more comments plus all the old comments. So, like, if you comment on today's video, I'll be counting that. I'll be counting every comment that ever happens on the channel. I'll be having an ever-growing list of for me to keep up with. But just wanted to, to let you know how that's going to work out. So keep the comments rolling in is all I'm saying. <laughs> but, oh, you know, obviously, I want to know what you're reading, what you're thinking about what I'm reading, what you're reading, books I should be reading, books that, you know, uh, that I read, whether you disagreed, uh, agree with this or that or whatever. Maybe, you know, one of the things I said didn't make sense. Maybe it does make sense and I'm too stupid to realize it. That's all I got for you, though. I will see you all next time. Ah. Uh.